I'm outside with part of the Red Raider Nation. Pretty soon we're heading into Jones AT&T Stadium for a huge game in the Big 12. Oklahoma can go to the Big 12 championship if they get by the Texas Tech Red Raiders tonight. Maybe even a national championship in their future. But first, they have to get by the pass-happy boys of the South Plains. We're getting ready for an air raid tonight in Lubbock. The Sooners and Red Raiders have two of the most potent passing attacks in college football. Sam Bradford has been Sam the Sensational, setting freshman records along the way while leading the country in pass efficiency and leading OU to the top of the Big 12 South. Graham Harrell leads the Raider air game. Another in the long line of Texas Tech gunslingers, the pass-happy boys of the South Plains can light the scoreboard from any spot on the field. And tonight, they look to spoil OU's title hopes. ESPN's presentation of Saturday Night Football on ABC is presented by Southwest Airlines. And our matchup from Lubbock, Texas tonight, it's the number four team in the country, the Sooners of Oklahoma, against the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. And as you take a look at the Big 12 South standings, you can see Oklahoma all alone in first place, Texas on their heels, but just one loss suffered against Colorado, the only blemish on Oklahoma's record. So what we've got tonight is two high-powered teams in Oklahoma knowing they can go to the Big 12 championship if they win this one. Welcome to Lubbock, everybody. I'm Brad Nussler. But first, they've got to get through the Red Raiders of Texas Tech, and that's no easy task because we've got two great quarterbacks. This might take about four hours. You might want to get an extra beverage tonight as we get set to head into the stadium. And one of my partners, that's the way he always gets ready for a game. He's doing his pregame research. Will you leave me alone? I'm trying to get some information on the game. This guy knows more than all of us. All Take right. a look at this guy. We're getting ready for a Saturday night celebration in Lubbock. Big matchup in the Big 12. Oklahoma still with their sights on the national championship game. They'll have to get through a Big 12 championship game to do just that. Welcome to Saturday Night Football. John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie. Out to your game in just a moment, but updating the Ohio State Buckeyes against Michigan, right? A lot of people consider this one the big one when it comes to rivalry. What Beanie Wells did as well, 222 yards on the ground today. Beanie Wells took advantage of a sloppy surface. It was raining, it was cold. His quarterback couldn't hold on to the football, neither could the receivers, but he could run. This dude was over 200 yards on the ground today, and Michigan's defense had no answer for him. Lloyd Carr has a press conference called for 10 a.m. on Monday, expected to announce his retirement. Iowa State against Kansas. And Doug, Todd Reesing was Todd Reesing today. Just another great day. Very efficient, handling the blitz, distributing the ball, moving around, making his run at a possible Heisman. So Kansas remains unbeaten. Big game against once beaten Missouri next week in primetime here on ABC. Perhaps after that, a date with Oklahoma, Oklahoma. the Big 12 championship game. Got a little mini, mini playoff going yeah. on, right? The winner yeah. from the north next week gets decided. Then they go on to play possibly Oklahoma. They can take care of business tonight. Sam Bradford. Leading this team, freshman quarterback, been sensational. Leads the nation in passing efficiency, right? But on the road in conference, only one touchdown, three interceptions. Struggled a little bit. Leans on DeMarco Murray in the backfield a little bit. He's got some great receivers. Been so fantastic. If you're Texas Tech, you got to play keep away, right? I mean, this is a game where you yeah. can talk about numbers, you can talk about conversions, you can talk about everything else, but it's Texas Tech's defensive line and linebackers that have got to come up and make plays on third down. They can't afford to let Oklahoma's offense convert third down. It's critical. And as soon as they come up and play tight against that run, they got to worry about Jermaine Gresham, who leads the nation in all tight ends with 10 touchdowns. 
So you've got to play sound, effective defense. And for Texas Tech, it is senior night. Hey, you'll make this walk in just a few years yourself, Greg. Already crying. <laughs> There comes the masked rider on the Midnight Matador, and behind him will come the Texas Tech Red Raiders. On senior night, 17 will clear out of that smoke for the final time on their home field. It is the Red Raiders of Texas Tech taking on the number four team in the country, the Sooners of Oklahoma. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nessler with one of my partners, Bob Greasy. Well, we've set it up. We know what Oklahoma can and has to do now. And thanks to little brother Mike Stoops and Oregon's lost Arizona on Thursday night, the stables are open right now for the Sooners if they can run the table. Well, the reloading at Oklahoma is over, and the Sooners are back in the national championship race. And the final piece of that puzzle was quarterback Sam Bradford. He has an outstanding season, but he's a redshirt freshman. He had his two poorest games on the road, so the key for Oklahoma, they've got to be able to run the football here tonight. Well, we know we're not going to see much running of the football from the other guys, the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. They pass, they pass, they pass some more. With more on that, let's go to my other partner who's going to get a great view of it. Down on the camera card is Paul McGuire. Pablo? That, that's, let me tell you something. When I saw the numbers at the beginning of this week, I said, I have to be down here to take a close look at this. Listen to this. Their offense averages 543 yards a game. Their quarterback has thrown 43 touchdown passes, 40 of them to wide receivers. Two of their wide receivers have caught balls for over 1,000 yards so far this year. Now, I'm going to tell you what. You're going to see fireworks tonight like you've never seen before. And now let me go to Bonnie, who's down with the coach and the guy that orchestrates this whole thing. Go, Bonnie. Well, Mike, your offense, as prolific as it is, has had a tough time putting up points against Oklahoma. What about this team you think could change that today? Well, we've got a good group that's getting better all the time, but a lot of people have trouble putting up points against Oklahoma, so we'll see how it goes today. Sam Bradford, OU's quarterback, you know him, you recruited him, you wanted to give him a scholarship. What is the biggest challenge with him? I just think he's playing real well. I mean, uh, uh, Josh Hype, who I recruited there, coaches him, so I think he does a real good job uh, getting him to play real level-headed like Josh, but uh, we're excited about our quarterback here. All right, thanks a lot, Mike. Brad? Well, Texas Tech comes in 7-4, and 3-4 and four in the conference, 4-1 and one at home so far this year. They're coming off a loss to Texas, and Texas Tech won the toss, and they want the ball. They always want the ball. The question is how long they can hold the ball. Sometimes they score too quickly. And so that means that Garrett Hartley will tee it up, and guns are almost up here in Lubbock. Detron Lewis and Edward Britton await on the other end for the Red Raiders. Night game in Lubbock. And we're all set for Saturday Night Football on ABC. Deep kick, and Texas Tech is going to work from its own 20-yard line. And Graham Harrell's the guy that'll bring him out. 6'3", junior, 15-9 as a starter. Nine career 400-yard passing games. And he has already become only the fifth player in bowl subdivision history with back-to-back 4,000-plus -back yard seasons. And he comes in with almost 5,000 tonight. Number one in the country, 4,878 passing yards, including an incredible, as Paul mentioned, 43 touchdowns. So the Red Raiders set it up at their own 20-yard line. And it's Harrell in the gun. First throw of the night is complete. And it's across the 25-yard line out to about the 27. Let's check today's starting lineups presented by Dell. And to do the honors, Donald Trump. My friend and one of the best coaches in the country, Mike Leach, has a potent offense. And it all starts up front with the linemen. They need to protect the quarterback. When they do, Graham Harrell is one of the best passers in the nation throwing to players like superstar wide receiver Michael Crabtree. We'll tell you the story about the Donald after we see this first down run by Eric Morris on the quick pass. Donald Trump, Mike Leach just goes to New York one day with his daughters and says, you know, I've read Donald Trump's book and I'm looking at all these big buildings. Someone got their name. I think I'll give him a call. 
go upstairs. So he calls upstairs and says, is Mr. Trump in? And they said, well, who's this? <laughs> well, I'm Mike Leach. I coached some football at Texas Tech, and I read his book, and I thought he had some pretty good points, and I might put some of those to use for my football team. <laughs> Well, they passed him around a few times, and lo and behold, uh, a couple weeks later, the Donald calls him, and, and they've been out of the blue, and they've been friends ever since. Is that crazy or what? Here's Harrell to throw again across the 40. Grant Walker. Let's check the Dell starting lineups defensively, and our old buddy Adrian Peterson. The OU defense is anchored by Demarcus Granger and linebacker Curtis Lofton. One of the best in the biz. In the second year, we have Reggie Smith, my little bro, Marcus Walker, and pretty boy Floyd, Nick Harris. AD, the Minnesota Vikings, with the starting lineups for us defensively. And as he said, his little bros back there are going to be busy tonight in that nickel defense because not only is it pass, pass, and pass some more, it's no huddle and a pretty brisk pace that the Red Raiders are setting right now as they're already out to the 49 yard line. Here comes a blitz. Harrell throws over and it's intercepted. Picked off by Lindy Holmes, the nickelback. Lindy Holmes, he might score. Inside the 30. Cuts back to the middle of the field. And he's in. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Nine yards, Grease, on the interception for the score. You know, Brad, I was just going to say when you said they like to throw it around, that said the defensive backs kind of like this type of game because it gives them a lot of opportunities to pick some passes off and, and do this. Great return, seven points going the other way. Holmes with a big play, his third interception of the season, and it has stunned the crowd here. On the opening drive for Texas Tech, the extra point is up and good. Lindy Holmes playing back there because they have to have five DBs on the field at all times, and Oklahoma knows what to do defensively when they get their hands on the ball. Touchdown Sooners, 7-0 early. Telecast of ESPN College Football on ABC HD is presented by DLP HD TV. Lindy Holmes just goes about 64 yards on the touchdown on that high definition screen in the end zone for the first score of the Knights. Darren Hartley to kick for the second time. And again, this will not be returnable, I don't think. I'm going to take a knee, Detron Lewis, five yards deep. So let's check the game plan, fellas. Well, Oklahoma, for Oklahoma, they got to stay in the chase. And for Texas Tech, just got to outshoot them. And, uh, you know, for Texas Tech and for Graham Harrell, I mean, being down seven points is like a drop in the bucket. Paul, you're down there. You said it didn't have any effect. It didn't seem, huh? No, they, they just kind of walked off the field and said, OK, let's go back out and throw seven <laughs> up of our own. Now they start from the 20 again. Lewis and Crawford flanking Harrell in the shotgun. And they will run the ball, believe it or not. No gain on the play. Jeremy Beal makes the stop. Graham Harrell loves this offense. We just attack leverage. Uh, wherever, wherever they're not, that's where we're going to try to go. We're going to throw it there. We're going to run it there. And uh, I think that's the, the, the part that makes this offense click is just that we feel like we can attack any part of the field at any time. And we have, a, uh, you know, five players that can make plays on the field at any time. Throw it where they ain't. Here comes Oklahoma with a blitz. Arrow to the air. Incomplete intended for Crabtree. And Reggie Smith was on the coverage defensively for OU. Ness, this is one of those things you're going to see uh, that Oklahoma will do against us, and they're not afraid to. They sent six guys. They, put, they, they just blitzed. They said, if you're going to throw it, we're going to come and get you and not let you settle down. So again, without the huddle, but not hurrying this time. And now Crabtree comes over, and he'll join a group in the middle as part of a trip set to the left of Harrell. There he is, number five. Leading receiver in the country. 
smashed every freshman record there is for the most part as far as a wide receiver is concerned. Harrell flushed and he's just going to get rid of this thing. Now yeah, wait a minute. Uh, he was out of bounds. Grant Walker actually got his hands over there. There were so many Oklahoma coaches and players so close to the sideline. I didn't see that Walker actually got his hands on the ball. Now so far the defense of Oklahoma is winning this battle. First possession interception for a touchdown. Second possession force him to punt and he doesn't like to punt. Here's Walker at the end of the play on the sideline and dives but his body's out of bounds. And that means Jonathan LaCour will have to punt. I said earlier today I'd like to be the punter here. You don't even have to stretch and here he is punting in the first quarter. Oh big hit but not on the guy that caught the ball. Dominic Franks was back there with Reggie Smith and Reggie took the shot. Dominique Franks took the return. Big hit by Stephen Harris on the special teams. Here's the end of the play. Hello, Reggie. And Dominique Frank says, thanks for taking it, teammate. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. With Southwest Airlines' convenient nonstop flights, it's like having your own company playing. Visit Southwest.com. The new 2008 Focus. Clean Exchange, a disposable head electric shaver, new from Remington. And Taco Bell, think outside the bun. The Toronto team won its third straight Southwest Championship, and they lead the 16 schools in the region after five fall roadies. Want to thank Coach Chris Gay and the team for letting us join their practice. Good job, ladies. You wouldn't run a mess with those no, guys. No, baby. <laughs> Tie up. Quick. Well, we got a fumble, and Texas Tech's got it. Going the other way, Bradford's going to make the tackle on Marlon Williams. And the Red Raiders get a break with their defense. I tell you, that ball just pops out, and it rolls for about eight yards, and it rolls right into the hands of Marlon Williams. Watch this when, when right at the line of scrimmage, he gets hit here, and the ball, watch where the ball ends up. It just rolls through people's legs. Ronald Williams just picks it up, and the quarterback makes the stop. It was Paul Williams, the middle linebacker, that knocked it loose. And then Marlin, no relation, picked it up and ran. And now a golden opportunity for the Red Raider offense at the Oklahoma 34-yard line. Will they try to take advantage of it with a quick strike following the turnover? First and 10, Texas Tech. They wanted to throw a screen on a crossing pattern, and it's incomplete, blown up by the Oklahoma defense. Crabtree was going to be the guy they wanted to get it in his hands. Incomplete. So Bob Stoops' team came in plus seven with a turnover margin, and Texas Tech was minus five, and that just went the other way yeah, for him that time. Oklahoma was 19th in the nation in turnover margin. As you mentioned, plus seven. That's really good. Second down at 10. They fake the run. Harrell flushed out of the pocket again. Tipped in the air. Incomplete. Allen Davis got a hand on it. I'm going to tell you what. They are so effective, Oklahoma, with the blitz. And they're disguising it very well. They, And the guy that's going to knock this ball up is, is Curtis Lofton, number 40. Watch him. He, these guys are... Or in his face. It was Davis, Paul. Excuse me, yeah, it was Davis. I saw lofted there. But thank you, Bob. That was Davis. But I'll tell you what, these guys are the, the three guys that are down are putting an awful lot of pressure on this offensive line. Oklahoma thinking about a blitz again. It's third down at 10. Coming off the corner, Harrell gets rid of it. Intended for Eric Morris. And a penalty marker down. DJ Wolf is a guy that came storming around the corner. The penalty decline, fourth down. Holding is on Aaron Crawford. He was trying to stop that blitz. And I like what the defense is doing. They're they're putting their they got a three-man line and they put the linebackers in between the linemen so the offensive line doesn't know which is guy's coming and which guy isn't. They're gonna try to get some points on the board here. 
And finally they run out the extra couple of bodies. They're going to try 51 yard field goal. Let's see if they can put three on following the fumble recovery. Kick on the way. Just inside the pipe. He got it. 51-yard field goal. Alex Chuleke. And Texas Tech's on the board. Well, the first score in any game is the toughest to get, and that is a big boost even for a team that has come in averaging 43 points a game. Those three are big against Oklahoma. Well, they can't all be touchdowns. <laughs> well, the race Bob said earlier, stay in the chase if you're Oklahoma. Speaking of the chase, it concludes tomorrow afternoon. NASCAR Nextel Cup Series Ford 400 at Homestead, Miami on ABC tomorrow, 3 o'clock Eastern. And Jimmy Johnson is in the driver's seat. Let's put it that way. Uh, and he's also on the pole. Now he won the pole. It's the last race of this. Well, these guys go on forever, don't they? Yeah, they do. Jeff huh? Gordon has got an outside shot. He's 86 points back. Actually, four times during the regular season, Jeff Gordon has made up an 87-point difference before. So oh, don't, yeah? Yeah, you got to watch See, out. Yeah, I didn't know you were watching it that closely. Uh, i got to tell you. The only way my man Gordon's got a chance is if he don't give any gas to Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> well, a four-play drive that went nowhere except over the crossbar and inside the upright. <laughs> All the points off turnovers so far. 51 yard field goal. Here's the kickoff. Fielded at the five by DeMarco Murray. Murray, oh boy. Great coverage by Texas Tech and Darcel McBath. And now the Red Raiders are fired up as we head into New York and get an update. Hi there, Matt Weiner here in New York. I'll let you know what's happening around the country throughout the game. Here's the Taco Bell update from Cincinnati. West Virginia can win the Big East maybe more by winning out, but they got to get past the Bearcats. And down 7 0, Ben Mock hits Marcus Barnett 70 yards to tie it up at 7. Oklahoma State trying to get bowl eligible, leads Baylor by 21. Oklahoma plays Oklahoma State next week. Patrick. Holds on to the football. And, excuse me, it's Chris Brown who gets out to about the 18-yard line. They're saying Texas Tech got the ball. And they didn't. Both teams a little chippy right here. Brian Duncan mixing well, it up with some of the Sooners. Texas Tech picked up that fumble earlier. They lead the nation in forced fumbles with 31. But they've only recovered eight, now nine, with that one here tonight. But they have a knack of knocking the ball out. Second down back, the 14-yard line. Johnson in motion. Play action for Bradford. And the run throws complete across the 20. And it looks like it's going to be a first down to Joaquin Iglesias. Let's check the Dell starting offensive group for the Sooners and Adrian Peterson. AD. The OU offense starts up front, big nasty, Duke Robinson. A quarterback, young gun, Sam Bradford, has weapons outside led by Malcolm Kelly. In the backfield, the tradition is still alive from AP, my boy, Alan Patrick. <laughs> and Adrian Peterson, we wish you a healthy comeback with the Minnesota Vikings. AD, one of our favorite players in his college years boy, was in Norman. It tearing it up, wasn't he? He sure was, on his way to maybe all-time records. and. Uh, we hope he can get back in a hurry. Let's check the Texas Tech Dell starting defense and once again the Donald. The Red Raiders front four need to get pressure on the quarterback. The linebackers are fast and agile while the secondary is going to make it a long day for the Sooners passing game. Oklahoma you're a great team but today you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> you know he talks at you like McGuire kind of always yelling you know. Yeah. Like he's the boss, right? Don't forget it either. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Bradford to throw. Swing pass to Alan Patrick. Make it Chris Brown, I beg your pardon. Brown again. And again, Paul has got a great view because he's going to generally be at about the line of scrimmage and watch things from that perch. Yeah, and I'm waiting for him to throw me a ball up here. I mean, they throw the ball so many times. Did they, can I ask a question? Did Texas Tech actually run a running play in that? They one had series? one. Yeah, they, they had one. 
Why? <laughs> Just to keep you honest. <laughs> Here's third down. Oklahoma, one of the best in the business on third down. 52% from their own 25. Bradford completes it and in and out of the hands of Kelly. So it's incomplete. He had his hands on it and couldn't hold it. And the Sooners have to give it up. Well, that was Chris Parker. What a great play he made as a quarter. And he just came up and knocked the ball out because the ball should have been caught by Kelly. Take a look at this. Kelly, Kelly has the ball in his hands. Now watch Parker. Just knock the ball out of his hands, pull his arms away. That's just great defense. Maybe Trump was right. <laughs> Mike Nall to punt. Danny Amendola waits on it on the other end. One of the seniors at the 21. And he's not going to get away. Only about a two-yard return. And Patrick down there in the special teams makes the hit for OU. 10-17 to go first quarter. 7-3 Sooners. For today's city coaching moment, we look back to 2000 when second-year head coach Bob Stoops and his undefeated Sooners faced Florida State in the national championship. Led by quarterback Josh Heupel, the Oklahoma offense struggled to score while the defense kept Florida State off balance. Two Oklahoma field goals were the only points scored until a late touchdown run by Quentin Griffin clinched the game. The victory secured an undefeated season for Stoops and Oklahoma's first national title in 15 seasons. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. So Texas Tech has got it back. They've already gotten a field goal on a drive that didn't go anywhere following a fumble return. And they've had an interception return for a touchdown by Lindy Holmes. That's our two scores. A defensive score for the Sooners and three points on offense. And here's a little toss to Aaron Crawford. It's another rarity. That's a, that's the the second run out of the spread offense and Bob we've seen it so many times inside the game you know everybody talks about the spread what the heck is it in yeah. a nutshell in a nutshell well think about third and one where everybody's lined up real tight and they're going to block him by all the defensive guys converse that with a spread where you two wide receivers on the left two out here on the right all the defense has to spread across the field and you don't have to block those guys now the spread is really good if you got a guy like Dennis Dixon of Oregon who can stand back there and either spread and throw it or run the ball himself that's where it really gets tough and there's a first down throw complete to Eric Morris the dimension of the running quarterback he's the guy you can't account for defensively that's so true and when you spread the field you're also spreading the defense and it creates holes and gaps not only for you to run in but for you to throw the football Eric Morris came in with 58 catches Amendola with 94 Crabtree with 113 <laughs> I mean <laughs> those are unbelievable those are, numbers those are career numbers first down at the 39 play action Harrell wants to throw a screen I think and he's just going to throw it away Demarcus Granger puts some great pressure on him at that point. Let's check in with Bonnie. Brad DeGreese's point for as hard as the spread is for defenders to deal with. Oklahoma maybe has a little bit of a leg up getting good pressure on Harrell because look at who they get to face in practice. For as big as Tech's offensive line is, Oklahoma's is almost just as big and they get more good on good first teamers against first teamers than a lot of teams across the country do. They'll get to see their own line 25 to 30 plays a day. So on Saturdays, nothing seems much faster than it does in practice during the week. Boy, some of these linemen on both these teams, <laughs> you're talking about 360. Well, the, the, uh, the Red Raiders are averaging 331 pounds per man. Harrell across the middle, completes it to Amendola. Danny Amendola down to the 44-yard line, first down, Texas Tech. And Amendola is not one of those big guys. He's only 177 pounds. Amendola is up here. Coming into the middle, he gets right in the middle of the field, a little guy. They've got two little guys in the slots, and then two big guys on, on the outside. See how he put the brakes on and got around Lewis Baker, the linebacker yeah. number 16? He knew where he was supposed to be. So first down, back in OU territory at the 44-yard line. Oh, quick bubble screen, if you will, out to Amendola again. Here's
Here's what we were talking about this year. Look at the receiving numbers for these four guys. Crabtree, Amendola, Morris, and Britton. As Bob said, 17.07 and 20 touchdowns on 113 receptions yeah, for Crabtree. It. That's like a career. That was like uh, 37 touchdowns for those four wide receivers this year. Of the 43 that Harrell has thrown. Second down along three. Crawford on the run, and he got about two of it. Demarcus Granger made the stop. This may be the only down that is questionable for this team because now you've got the ball at third and about a yard and a half. Do you run it or do you go right back to what you do best and throw the ball? Well, you know that they're within their field goal kicker's range because he's gotten one from almost this far out. And Mike Leach, he just says, you know, he hates he hates even the word punting. Yeah. So we we're not going to get a punt. We know that. Oh, yeah. But you saw him there signaling in the play. They both have wristbands. So he held up, held up some fingers and uh, signaled in, look at your wristband. That's the play I want. And they have gone on fourth down. They're going to have to take a timeout here. Didn't like the looks of things. With 7.57 remaining in the first quarter, we've got a little break here, and we can send it to Matt Weiner in New York. Matt? All right, Brad, in addition to the Sooners and Red Raiders on ESPN, West Virginia and Cincinnati, huge implications in the Big East, potentially in the BCS as well. The Bearcats just picked off Pat White there. That came tied up at seven apiece. And Clemson and Boston College playing for the Atlantic Division title in the ACC. The winner there goes on to the conference championship game. Tigers have the early advantage, 7-0 early in the second. It's one of the biggest games in Death Valley in a long, long time. And here, final home game for Texas Tech. Last year they were eight and five, four and four in the conference. Right now, seven and four and three and four in conference play. Harrell now trotting back out there with Amendola, and Morris, Crawford as tailback, and the high-powered offense of Texas Tech that scores 43 points a game, third in the country. Oklahoma's number two at 45 a game. So far, just 7-3 here, and guns are up in the stands for their offense. 0 for 2 on third down so far today. Harrell under center trying to draw off the Oklahoma defense, and now he'll backpedal back into the shotgun. And here come the Sooners after him. Throws over the middle, incomplete. Intended for Amendola. And it's fourth down. Oklahoma. But remember, they go for it on oh, yeah. fourth down more than uh, pretty much anybody in the country. 24 times <laughs> they've gone on fourth down this year, Texas Tech. They so. made it. Made it 14 to the 24. There it is. <laughs> that, that's, that's one of those deals where the coach says, all right, let's hold them on third and fourth down. <laughs> Somebody told me the other day, you know, they don't have that many three and outs. I said, that's because they have four and outs. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so fourth down here at a big one in the opening quarter. They've got to get it. At the 34 yard line. Fourth down and two. And coverage. Harrell has time. Pumps. Now he pulls it down. Let's see if he's going to run for it. He's got it. He doesn't run a lot, but that one was effective. You're right. He doesn't run a lot. And when you're in man coverage, the defensive backs turn and run with the receivers downfield. All right, when you take a look at this thing, you're going to see these guys go by him. Now watch what Harold does. He steps up right here. He almost lost the ball. Then he looks and he sees exactly what you saw, Bob. All those guys downfield with, his, with their backs to him. And he said, why not run? And picks up 11 on fourth down and two. So now they're 15 to 25 on fourth down conversions on the year. And they keep their drive alive. Again, Oklahoma brings the heat. Harrell running for his life. Throws. Is it caught by Crabtree? No, they're going to say he trapped it. Marcus Walker was covering back there. Kansas was a winner today again. If you missed it on ABC, it was 45 to 7. An impressive win by the number three team that'll move to number two. Kansas State, Missouri. Missouri a winner, so that sets up the big showdown with the Jayhawks. And Oklahoma State at halftime leading Baylor 28 to 14. First time ever 11 and 0 for the Kansas Jayhawks. They're uh, setting all kinds of records over there. Chase Daniel had another huge day today against Kansas State. What a showdown that'll be. How huh? those two quarterbacks next week. 
Whoa, Harrell wasn't ready for the ball, but he caught it anyway and throws it complete to Amendola. I don't think Graham saw that thing coming until it was right in his chest, Bob. <laughs> well, he reacted well to it. Yes, he did. <laughs> Looked like he was just looking out of the corner of his eye. He's looking to the left. Watch that. That's a great shot. Now watch the ball. He's like, okay, we're going to do this. Whoops. <laughs> he turned the back just in time. You know, it's really funny when you talked about all these big linemen of Texas Tech. And then you look in the backfield with, when they huddle up with Harold, they all look like little munchkins. I mean, <laughs> they're all little people. Eleventh play of the drive. Number 76 weighs 375 pounds. That's Another. on the left side, Bob. <laughs> That's Carter. Here comes everybody. And it has it knocked down by Allen Davis. Second time today, Davis has got a hand on it. And on fourth down, now this may be a decision. Do you take uh, the for sure three, or do you go on fourth down well, just, and six? It just depends on how you're feeling if you're Mike Leach. I don't think anybody can predict what he's going to do. He doesn't like the putt, Bob, but he will, he will occasionally kick a field goal because that puts points on the board. What he doesn't like about punting is, is giving that ball up to, to the other team. It'll be a 38-yard field goal attempt. First one was good from 51 for Alex. Now he'll try to make it a one-point ball game here. From 38, kick on the way, and he is two for two. So it's a one-point ball game. 6:42 remaining in the first quarter. Saturday night football from Lubbock, Texas, 7-6. Oklahoma in front, courtesy of an interception return for a touchdown. The masked rider of the South Plains. <laughs> he just went by me, Ness. <laughs> 12 play drive, 50. Five yards covered and 335 they use off the clock. And with 642 remaining in the quarter. A kick. Will go two yards deep to Iglesias. Iglesias got a little bit of a gap on the near sideline. He's all the way out near midfield. Nice return. Of almost 50 yards as we check in with Matt Weiner in New York. All right, Brad, this Sports Center Minute is powered by Vizio. Todd Reesing hit on 19 of his first 20 passing attempts, tossed four touchdown passes on the day. Kansas has won 11 games for the first time ever. They beat Iowa State to set up a showdown with Missouri next week. And on the heels of Michigan's loss to Ohio State, Wolverines coach Lloyd Carr will step down on Monday at a 10 a.m. news conference. ESPN has learned today, 13 years, five Big Ten titles, one national championship for Carr. All right, Matt, thanks. As we're back here, an injured player, Anthony Hines, and appears to be holding his he knee involved, trying to cover that kickoff return. And as they tend to him, we'll let you know coming up uh, tomorrow night, some of the biggest music stars on the planet will come together. Live performances by Rascal Flatts, Maroon 5, Lenny Kravitz, Fergie, a lot more. First time ever, your votes will decide who wins. The American Music Awards tomorrow on ABC. Hey, Beyonce is going to be there. Special appearance. Got to watch that. Boy, you hope in the last game of the season, the regular season, yeah. you don't end up with a knee injury. Yeah, it's tough. ESPNU All-State standings review, LSU. And a winner at Ole Miss today. So they're 10-1, and one and they're headed to the SEC title game in Atlanta. And who will they play? Will it be Tennessee or Georgia? That's yet to be determined. Oregon lost on Thursday night, of course. And that sets the stage for Kansas to move to 2 and Oklahoma to 3. And Missouri would move to 4. And, of course, it's a three-team playoff, basically, in the next couple of weeks between those two teams from the Big 12. And, you know, six times in the nine years, and it'll be 7 of 10 now. Yeah. A team with one loss will play for the BCS title. Six of nine so far, and it will for sure be seven out of ten. Kansas is the only team that is still undefeated that has a chance to get to the championship game undefeated. But if they were to get there against LSU, LSU would have at least one loss. So, yeah, we hope Anthony's going to be okay out of Denison, Texas, and being helped off the field, that's tough. 
LSU still has a game left before they go to that championship game in Atlanta. That's right. I think it's Arkansas. At the 49, here's DeMarco Murray. Great speed by this young guy, and he falls forward for almost nine yards. And now we got a fracas going on on the Sooner bench. That's not a good spot to pick a fight if you're a Texas Tech defender. Rajon Henley and Duke Robinson, I think, were kind of hooked up over there. And there's a flag down. And let's see if it's because of the altercation on the sideline or if it's for some other reason. John Bible's our referee. After the play, personal foul number 72 on the offense. That's a 15-yard penalty from the dead ball spot. The down counts. It'll be second down. Oh, and I think Bob Stoops is upset that it's not offsetting penalties. He just threw his headset. Crowd reacting to that. Duke Robinson is the guy, the left guard, the big fella out of Atlanta, 350 pounder. Let's watch the end of the play. And boom. Well, it's way late. Yep. And Duke's just driving. He, he's trying to drive them all the way to the uh, well, New Mexico border. Yeah, but, and, what, what, but what happened before that? You we, never know. We saw the second part of it. I don't know if there was a first part or not, but with Stoops reacting, I mean, it looked like it was a no-brainer against Oklahoma. Why would Stoops react that way if something else didn't happen? Oklahoma's got Joey Halsley in the lineup at quarterback, and he's going to throw it deep. Man out there's Kelly, and it's almost intercepted by Texas Tech. Great coverage. Jamar Wall stride for stride with Kelly. I don't know if anything's wrong with Sam Bradford or if this was by design that Joey Halsley's were going to get a little bit of time, but there he is. A junior out of Huntington Beach, California. I didn't see anything happen with Sam Bradford. I didn't either. He's over on the bench area talking to some trainers. With his helmet off. So this is an interesting twist. There's Sam. Doesn't look like he's hurt, but how do we know? From, yeah. from our vantage point, we didn't see anything happen to him. And now the backup quarterback goes down in a heap. And you know the Red Raiders are smelling blood. Daniel Charbonnet and Rajon Henley get in there in the sack. You know, I remember back. Well, let's take a look at this first. See the blocking up front. Somebody gets in right through the middle. That's Duke Robinson, number 72, that allows the sack. But I'm just thinking back. Remember when the fumble was picked up, it was it was Sam Bradford that made the tackle. Maybe he had got his head, his head hit. Maybe he's got a slight concussion of some kind. No, with a terrible punt that lands at about the 42-yard line. Texas Tech with a golden opportunity as you look at the starting quarterback, the guy leading the nation in pass efficiency without his helmet on the sideline. And then Nall hits just a 28-yard punt. And, and that's, I'll tell you right, we haven't even played 10 minutes and I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Bob's arm sore up here that's already, right, and Harold hasn't got out of the first quarter. It's I unbelievable. Got, I got ice on my shoulder already. <laughs> <laughs> and now the Red Raiders from their own 39-yard line. Arrow with trips to his right. Three wide receivers out there. Trying to take the lead. Fires, got his man. Crabtree inside the 40. Crabtree with a nice move. Cuts back. Picks up a blocker. Inside the 20. Down the sideline. Did he get there? Touchdown. <laughs> 61 yards, Bob. This is why we look at Crabtree. He is the leading receiver in the country, not only in yards, not only in receptions, but touchdowns as well. This is his 21st touchdown on the year. Tight ropes the sideline, got one foot down, and then the pylon hit it. 61-yard touchdown in Texas Tech. They're going to review this play, but Texas Tech is in front at the moment, and it would be 13-7 if this holds up. 
I'll tell you one thing, Bob, when just being down here on the field close to him, when he caught the ball, you talk about awareness of where everybody else is. His footwork was unbelievable just to get away from the defenders. He made a stop move and cut right back to his right, and he was back at full speed after two steps. Not only is he big and strong, let's check and see if he steps on the line before. Problem is the ball's in his right hand and not in his left hand. Boy, that was a great effort. Makes it great for him to stay in bounds. The officials are right there. I don't think there's going to be anything where they can take this away because the left foot appears to stay in there. The right foot, just an unbelievable yeah. job to get the right foot kind of at a 45-degree angle. He stepped on, a, on the side of his arch and then took it in and hit the pilot. There, there, are two, there, there are two steps there on the sideline. After review, the runner stepped out of bounds at the one-yard line. It'll be Texas Tech's ball, one-yard line, first and goal. All right, well, they're going to reverse it then. Well, I don't see how you can see him stepping out of bounds from any angle that we show. Unless you're right on down that line. Yeah, and that's... That's and touchdown. The only... The officials in the review, review booth only see what we have shown out, put out on the air here. And so I didn't see anything that was really uh, convincing to, to over, overturn the call. And... Terry Turlington's our replay official, and they say one yard line, so it's one yard line. And now it's a quarterback sneak. And now they're in for the touchdown. So Harrell's going to get credit instead of Crabtree, but they'll take it however they can get it. All right, there's a running game. <laughs> yeah, right. Of course. Everybody knows, I think, that follows college football that Mike Leach was fined $10,000 by the Big 12 for his comments about the officiating in the game last week in the loss to Texas. And so here, they almost took a touchdown away, but they get it one play later anyway. And they'll try to tack on the 13th point right here. And it's up and it is good. 13 to 7. Texas Tech, and let's take you back to last week and Mike Leach's comments following the 59 to 43 loss to Texas. This second year in a row. This second year in a row that an Austin resident has, uh, has uh, through officiating, negatively impacted uh, the football game, the integrity of the football game. I think that's unfortunate. And I think it's disturbing that Austin residents would be involved in this. Well, the referee was from Austin in that game, and Mike uh, handed down the stiffest penalty ever in Big 12 history. And Bonnie's got more on that, Bonnie. Well, initially, uh, Leach said he wanted to appeal the fine, but what he didn't realize was that the deadline for doing that was Tuesday night, and he decided on Wednesday. So Tech didn't think they were going to be able to appeal it, but I just spoke with Dan Beebe, the Big 12 commissioner, before the game. He met with Tech's athletic director, Gerald Myers, today. Beebe's in attendance at the game today. They sat down to talk to realize there was a misunderstanding with the communication. Beebe says he will now accept the appeal, and now it's up to the Big 12's appellate board to decide if they want to do that if they want to take the appeal or not and there's not really a deadline at the moment Brad okay Bonnie thanks for the update I saw Commissioner Beebe earlier in the press box up here but I didn't talk to him about it and that's a, that's an update we needed to know we kiddingly said to Mike the other day I said you know I was going to ask you for a loan but I guess that's out of the question at the four yard line DeMarco Murray Murray he might take it great speed and he's knocked out of bounds but he got in to Texas Tech territory. Back-to-back -back great returns, one by Murray and the other one by Iglesias. Oklahoma is third in the nation in kickoff returns, and Murray has returned two of them for touchdowns. A penalty marker on the, flat, on the field. Penalty, spot of a foul, first down. The big story right now for Oklahoma is the uh, that man right there, Sam Bradford, the redshirt freshman quarterback who has been sensational this year, 
has just been taken out of the ball game, and I think it's because of a concussion that he may have suffered early in the game when he tried to recover or tackle the guy that had recovered a fumble against Oklahoma. So that block in the back negates another 49-yard kickoff return, this one by Murray, and so they set up shop inside their own 20 instead of in Texas Tech territory. Here's Murray, this time on the ground out to the 26-yard line where Kellen Tillman made the stop. Let's go back to the play that Bob was talking about. Remember, this was on the fumble, and now he's trying to tackle the linebacker, and quarterbacks don't like tackling anybody if they can help it. But he got hit and landed on pretty good. He looks like he's getting up a little woozy. Oh, I think you're right. I think uh, that, that might have been the play. Yeah. I've seen that look before. I've been, I've been You've there. You've been that look before. <laughs> that look <laughs> last night. sitting on that bench. <laughs> I am that, that look before. <laughs> yeah, you had it last night. Murray, yeah. first down. As we check in with Matt Warner in New York. Matt. All right, Brad, West Virginia is one of those one-loss teams you were talking about trying to play their way into the national title game. And this Verizon Wireless updated Cincinnati trying to take care of business against the Bearcats. That's Pat White from seven yards out. That's now a 14-10 game. They've never lost at Cincinnati. Oklahoma State's gone to halftime and Waco and up by a couple of touchdowns. Patrick White, another one of those quarterbacks in the spread that can do so many things with his legs. Chris Brown checks in at tailback for the Sooners, and he'll get the call. Puts both hands around the football, got collared as he got across the 40 to about the 41-yard line. Well, this thing started with a bang for Oklahoma's Lindy Holmes a 63-yard interception return put Oklahoma in front, but Texas Tech got a field goal, and then another field goal. One was a 51-yarder, and then they just got a 61-yard pass play down close to Michael Crabtree, and Graham Harrell did the honors on the quarterback sneak for the one-yard touchdown, and it's Texas Tech 13-7. to Brown trying to follow his blockers, those two big guys on the left side, Duke Robinson and Phil Lodeholt, and they are loads, both of them over 350 pounds, but he's about a yard shy, I think, of the first down. Ness, one of the things you think about, too, with this, when we saw the uh, Oregon game the other night when the quarterback, Dixon, went out in the quarterback, and we saw the whole team just basically fold. Well, this team here is a running football team anyway, Oklahoma. So the, I'm not saying that, that losing the quarterback doesn't hurt them. Yeah, it does, but they can still run, and, and Texas Tech, they're not very good against the run. Here's a big third down right here for Oklahoma, third in a yard. He's looking up the scoreboards, trying to get himself mentally back in this ballgame. High backfield with a fullback to lead the way. Brown's got the first down. I think he you was know, down. The question is, did Halsley trip and have his knee down before he got the handoff? I think that is right. That's what they're saying. John Bible's saying bring it back, put it down at the 42. And it's fourth down. Watch this, he trips coming out from under center. He and gets tripped. His knee is down. Yeah, he gets tripped by the center or the guard. And that's Josh Heupel talking to the number two quarterback, who's yeah. now the number one quarterback. Now Mike Nall, he's going to hope for a better punt than the last one. Eric Morris waits on the other end. Morris takes it at the nine. And he got a crease. Morris. Nice return out to the 34-yard line. Let's take a look at this rivalry presented by Sonic. Upcoming games, Texas and A&M get together their annual day after Thanksgiving get-together on ABC. Georgia and Georgia Tech will be at Bobby Dodd Stadium to watch the Yellow Jackets and the Bulldogs next Saturday. Alabama and Auburn, the Iron Bowl, coming up Saturday a week from tonight on ESPN at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Kansas and Missouri, we mentioned, they'll settle the North on ABC. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines next week from Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. Boy, that'll be a scene. Harold throws complete. Oh, the face mask. Danny Amendola made the catch, and Lewis Baker got a whole bunch of face masks. That's a 15-yarder. Brent Venables out to have a word with Baker. 16 on the defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. 
Oklahoma making mistakes. Their starting quarterback out, a fired up crowd in Lubbock. Could it all add up to, you know what, another upset in college football this year? Take a look at this. Number yeah. 16, that's Baker. You know, defensive guys don't go in trying to tackle you by the face mask, but they just need to get you down. They're grabbing for anything. And if your face mask gets in their hand, they're going to they're going to use it. So back in Oklahoma Territory is Texas Tech at the 46. Harrell, little shovel pass just to get out of trouble. Edward Britton gets it out, and he's close to a first down. Going to be about a yard shy. So many weapons. So many Great weapons. presence of mind there, and I just showed you by Harrell. Keeps his cool back there in the pocket and then just throws that little shovel pass out there and says, go take it for as many as you can get. Harrow is a redshirt junior. This is his fourth year at the school. He has another year next year. He played last year and did well. This year, he's doing even better. Long line of quarterbacks that have put up big numbers at the school. And he's the newest in line. Here's the throw to Eric Morris. And so I don't many. think Morris got anything yeah, on that So play. many of the completions for these quarterbacks at Tech are like that one. It's a long handoff, or it's a short pass over the line of scrimmage. I asked the last couple of days, how many of the throws are behind the line of scrimmage or within five or six, seven yards downfield? And the answer was like 40%. They actually lost a foot or two, I think, on that last one. And it's going to bring up third down and almost three, long two. But hey, it's just third down. Don't worry about it. There's always <laughs> another down to play. You got two downs to make this. Yeah. Quick throw, first down and more. Crabtree inside the 30 of Oklahoma. You just cannot give Crabtree that much room on the outside. If you're going to play him, you better play somebody up close. Look at how much room he has to come down inside. You don't even see a white shirt till after he catches the ball. Again, now without the huddle, first down at the 28. Harold taking his time. And whistle, and the first quarter comes to a close. Texas Tech, after the first 15 minutes, leading the number four team in the country. ABC college football is here. Reckon Tech. Wow, nice rider. And the fans behind him in the end zone. And his team in front. Here's another shovel pass. Crawford trying to sidestep the rush. Does pretty well to do so. Got down to about the 25-yard line. So the second quarter starts. Texas Tech trying to pull an upset. Still a long ways to go, Grease, but they're doing everything well, and Oklahoma's not doing things so well. Lose uh, your head there. Lost my head and everything else. Uh, I think, the, I think, obviously, the injury to Bradford is, is the biggest thing so far in the first quarter. They're going to have to adjust. They're going to have to say, all right, we're going to have to win this with, with Halsley, the backup quarter. Hadn't played much. No. We're going to lose our guy that's helped us the whole year. But still, he's got to find a way to win with somebody that you're not comfortable with. Texas Tech knows that. They can pin their ears back a little bit more on defense. On offense, they always have their ears pinned back. Crawford makes the catch. He's short of the first down by a couple. And Paul, Texas Tech driving right by you down there. Yeah, they are. You know, and they, this is a confident football team. They, these guys, you know, you just sit there and you watch them. They all know exactly what they have to do. Uh, they don't care that Oklahoma may be going to the PCS championship game or could go. These guys are really playing pretty good football, starting with that offensive line. I love seeing you move laterally so well I'd at get, your advanced I'd, I'd, age. I'll tell you, I need a bucket down here. <laughs> <laughs> at the 20-yard line, third down and two. Oklahoma doesn't get scored on much when the opposition gets down to that red zone. They're one of the best in the country at preventing snap, scores. Ball start, 74 offense. And that's going to be a little Five bit longer. Third down. And Grace, did you just see this defense that Oklahoma just put up? They had no one in the middle of the field. That's they put everybody up near the line of scrimmage. They had nobody deep. That's why the left tackle jumped, because the quarterback was taking so long to try to get to a checkoff. 
Look at this, Bobby. You see that? You, the only guy you see in the backfield is the, is the official. There they are. No, they got everybody, 11 guys on the line of scrimmage. Reed jumped early. Now it's third down and seven. Harrell stands in and waits. Buys himself some time. Given ground. Got a block. A big one. And now throws a little lob pass to Crawford for the first down. How about that? This is, this is just a great play by the quarterback. I was looking downfield during the whole thing, and everybody was covered. Everybody was covered. For the longest time, the Oklahoma defense had everybody covered. And then it finally at the end, finally at the end because Harold buys so much time, somebody comes free. Graham is seven out of seven on this drive. And now Texas Tech at the OU 13-yard line, leading 13 to seven here in the second quarter. Harrell has it tipped again. Almost intercepted. Three Sooners had a shot at it. Adrian Taylor is the guy that tipped it. And that could have been a big, big turnover right there. Well, that's that's a good move by a defensive lineman. If you're not going to get there, get your hands up. You know what, Bob? I'm looking at the guys downfield and the linebacker. Was Curtis Lothar was with him. They could just see the ball coming down. Now, do I jump up and get it? Do I wait on it? What do I do? There are people coming coming around. They're going to hit me. I'm going to tell you, it was really funny watching these guys in the end zone. You saw that graphic of what I talked about. Oklahoma stiffens when you get down in that red zone. I don't know if they can hold Texas Tech. Three more plays here. Here's a lob to the corner. Broken up and almost intercepted by Reggie Smith. Reggie Smith, great coverage on Edward Britton over there in the corner. Look at it. Sometimes they throw it over the top. Sometimes they throw it to the back shoulder. And this time it was going over the top. And Smith made a great play on it. So now it's third and ten. Both Crawford and Lewis, the two running backs in the backfield as Coach Leach looks right past his star wide receiver, number five, Michael Crabtree. They fake the run and go to the end zone. Touchdown, Crabtree in the corner. They're not going to take that one away from Crabtree. I'll tell you something, Ness, it's absolutely amazing. Nobody covered him. I'm talking about the leading receiver in the nation, and nobody covered this guy. He ran right below me. I could have knocked the ball down. Well, maybe not. Oklahoma wishes you had. It's about to be 20 to 7. The extra point is up and good. We got a long way to go, but this Texas Tech team is smelling upset. 12-18 to go in the half. Another touchdown. Harold to his favorite receiver, and it's 20 to 7, Texas Tech. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Let's go back to the touchdown, Grease. Watch the uh, quarterback, Graham. He's going to look to the center of the field. That's holding the safety to the middle of the field. Then he throws the out route at the corner route to Crabtree. This guy is really something. So Texas Tech has scored on four straight possessions. Harrell has thrown for one and run for one. That capped the 66-yard march in almost five minutes. He was almost perfect on that drive throwing the football. This kick's returnable. Murray from the three. Had an excellent return last time. Murray trying to get to the corner and can't. Only got to about the 23-yard line. Pete Richardson made the stop on the kick return. You know, when you take a look at Michael Crabtree out here, you watch this guy. You know they're going to throw the ball to him. Someone should cover him. He comes out. He, he runs a post pattern and goes right back into the corner. And look at how wide open he is. They just leave him alone. There are, there, there are four white shirts back there, and nobody covers this guy. Why not him? If you're just joining us, Joey 
Hawley at quarterback for Oklahoma. Sam Bradford shaken up earlier. Hawley throwing on the run, incomplete intended for Malcolm Kelly. And let's see if Bonnie knows more about Sam Bradford than we do. Well, Brad, not really, because the director from Bob Stoops is always at injury information to come through him so I can't get anything from the trainers what I can tell you is when Bradford made that tackle a couple drives ago he came off the field the trainers were doing those customary concussion tests I haven't seen the trainers working on anything else on Bradford since then but think about it if he's unable to return two quarterback injuries could completely change the BCS standings if Oklahoma loses and with Dennis Dixon going down in Oregon losing to Arizona Thursday night exactly one guy going down set the stage for Oklahoma to maybe play in the title game and now with their quarterback on the sideline Line. They face a fired up Texas Tech team that leads 20 to 7 with 12 minutes to go in the half. Well, time for our athletic trivia question. What was the last school to win the national championship after not being ranked in any preseason poll? Now, Kansas has got an opportunity. If they can win out and go all the way, they won again today. They're 11 and 0. So that's why we ask you that question. And Kansas was not ranked. They were ranked about 40th in the preseason polls if you want to go down that far. Texas Tech's even winning the time of possession. That almost never happens. That never happens. And now it's getting loud in here for Halsley. No time. Didn't get it off. Didn't, didn't get it off. Before the snap, the Lamb game on the offense. Five yard penalty, third down. This crowd is on fire, and they're usually on fire for their offense, but they know that the noise is going to bug that backup quarterback for Oklahoma. And that's what I don't understand is, you know, Texas Tech, they're not very good against the run. And why this Oklahoma team didn't, they came out and they threw twice with a backup quarterback. Run the football, you're only two scores down. Hosley trying to get his voice heard over the crowd. Batted in the air and complete. If you're Oklahoma right now, things can't get much worse. You're on the road, a hostile environment, your starting quarterback is down, and you're up against a team that scores a lot of points. You just have to weather this, get to halftime, or get to your quarterback and just, like Paul said, get something going, get a run game going, get some offense and get your defense to do something. Halsley, 0 for 4, and another punt coming up. Nall like to get into one of these. Finally, he did, driving Amendola back to the 22. Danny Amendola, and he's out to the 36-yard line. Good return. 60-yard punts. Graham Harrell. He's already run for one and thrown for one, and he's going to get his hands on it again in a minute. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. With Southwest Airlines' convenient nonstop flights, it's like having your own company playing. Visit Southwest.com. Hummer, like nothing else. Aflac, ask about it at work. And DLP HD TV. DLP is the official ESPN on ABC HD telecast sponsor of college football. Red Raider fans got a double dose today. Basketball team played. Coach Knight's team played the Lumberjacks. So Stephen Ave Austin won at 60 to 44. And you can watch that game this morning, then come to the football game tonight. Coach Knight's going to join us sometime in the third quarter. Harold. Completes slipping his crab trees. He got to about the 42-yard line. And you look way over there in the suites. And uh, Coach Knight is over there with a whole group of his ex-players from West Point. Ex-players, uh, ex-generals, uh, retired generals. Professors. Prof you name it, he, a whole bunch it's, of... It's an <laughs> annual thing that he brings them in. I think they've been doing this 15 years. Here's Crawford. Aaron Crawford. Good looking run, and now everything's working because the pass is working so well. They've got the lead, and they actually run the ball for 10 yards. 
So first down, Texas Tech. We asked you the Aflac trivia question. The last time a team in the preseason was not ranked and went on to win the national championship. Coach Ford's team, Dan and Death Valley, Clemson's Tigers in 81. And before that, you got to go all the way back to LSU. They won the national championship under Billy Cannon and company in 58 when they weren't ranked in the preseason. Of course, LSU ranks number one right now in the BCS poll, and Kansas is going to move to two as the throws completes, and it's going to be close to a first down to Grant Walker. The surprises, of course, in the Big 12 this year are not Oklahoma or Texas. It's what the north half has done, including Kansas and Missouri, and Kansas has never been 11-0, but they are now after their win today. Yeah, look at some of this stuff. 46 points a game, Off plus 20 in turnover margin. Offense second in the nation. And so turnover Kansas, margin. Kansas is going to be number two. You don't know how high Missouri is going to move up, especially if Oklahoma doesn't come from behind in this game. Harrell over the middle. Oh, Amendola a little bit behind him, but it looked like it got there a little quick, and Danny didn't see it coming. It's incomplete. Let's check in and update in New York. Here's Matt Weiner, Matt. All right, Brad, here's our nominee for the Pontiac game-changing performance. Michigan State had already trimmed a 17-point Penn State lead down to three when they went on an 80-yard touchdown drive in the fourth quarter, including that fake punt. And this touchdown pushed over the game winner by Jehu Palkrick. Check out the season's best Pontiac game-changing performances at ESPN.com. Search Pontiac. Boy, a nice season for Coach D'Antonio's oh, sure. Spartans. That's for sure. Putting some life back in football in East Lansing. And in Illinois. Uh, That's Zook. right. Coach Zook, Zook another win today. Great job. Harrell, third down and one. Buys himself some time. Now he's going to go deep. Got a man out there incomplete. Overshot him. Crabtree was there, but so was D.J. Wolf. And Gerald McCoy got a pretty good hit on... Harold, Bonnie. Hey, Brad, when you talk to Coach Knight, ask him how bad he wanted Crabtree. Yeah. <laughs> Dana Holgerson, the offensive <laughs> coordinator for Tech, was telling us yesterday that while Leach was recruiting Crabtree for football, Knight wanted for basketball because Michael was actually one of the top 50 hoops players in Texas a couple years ago. But it turns out, even though he would have liked to play it in the NBA, he's only 6'2", he knew he had a better shot playing pro football. And he was not a point guard. He was a two guard. And there are a lot of two guards playing in the NBA. But he'll be playing in the NFL. I'm guaranteed see that OU takes a timeout Oklahoma trailing with 950 left in the half by 13 you're watching ESPN college football on ABC second time tonight the Texas Tech will go on fourth down fourth down and about a yard extra lineman in there for the Red Raiders they've got six offensive linemen in a short yardage set for them. They don't have many short yardage sets. And now whistle stops play. Timeout Texas Tech. That's their second timeout of the half. Well, coming out of a timeout, you usually don't see a timeout. And this is a short one. Fourth down and a yard coming up. Our Pacific Life game summary. And a big part of the game is the fact that the Oklahoma Sooners don't have the nation's leading passer, pass efficiency-wise. On a fumble, Sam Bradford making a tackle on the linebacker. Williams goes down, kind of ends up in a pile there. Very slow to get up. Meanwhile, his counterpart on the other side, Graham Harrell going to the corner to Michael Crabtree, his 21st touchdown catch of the year. Harrell's also run from a yard out. And it is 20-7 in another shocker on this wacky college football season of 2007. A long way to go, but you got to wonder, guys, and Bonnie, if Oklahoma can do anything. They haven't taken a snap in Texas Tech territory, and now they got their backup quarterback in there. Well, the first series of the game, they got an interception, and that's all the points. Their defense has scored. Sometimes when that happens, the offense kind of lets down a little bit, especially when you lose your starting quarterback. Now they're in trouble. They got to get something going offensively. Meanwhile, the Red Raiders of 23 of 39 in Oklahoma territory. Just under 10 minutes left in the first half. Fourth down and a yard. And the quick pass is complete. First down. Guess who? Well, I'll tell you what. This was a great throw because he had to throw over those big linemen, and he has Crabtree just on a quick slant. Boom, boom. And look at how quick this ball gets there. I mean, there's outstanding coverage by Reggie Smith, but he couldn't do anything about the pass. Saw both receivers on that side ran a little slant, a little look in, 
So he was just going to get the ball and throw it to whichever one he felt was open. Now they go back to their trip set to the left of Harrell on a first down. But he's coming back the other way, in and out of the hands of Grant Walker. And Walker took a lick from Reggie Smith, incomplete. Mike Leach calling the plays over there on the sideline, looking at that sheet. Dana Holgerson is listed as the offensive coordinator, but, you know, saying that Mike Leach has an offensive coordinator is like saying Rachel Ray has a private chef, you know, or something like that. <laughs> look how look how small that sheet is he's looking from, too. you got better eyes than we do. Yeah, I mean, you know, lots of guys that call plays got these big, big boards, color-coded, laminated, and the whole works. He's got a little piece of paper down there with some plays written on it. Second and ten, Harold winds and throws complete to Crabtree again inside the 20. First down, Red Raiders. You know, you all you do is watch Crabtree run, and you talk about getting away from people. Watch this and find the hole. Look at this. He just drifts back to the outside, and there's still, again, when I see, you know, see someone tackle him that quick, but they're really not on him. You know, this kid is a redshirt freshman, played quarterback in high school and point guard. Harold, a high school quarterback for his dad, is a very successful high school coach. Sam, his dad, one of the most successful high school coaches probably in the state of Texas. And you can tell this kid's been around football his whole life. I'm talking about Graham Harrell, the quarterback, as he looks down at that wristband. He's already found Crabtree seven times for 120 yards and a touchdown. And there's his numbers of 222. 120 of that has gone to Michael Crabtree. At the Oklahoma 15-yard line, second down and nine. Comes up, shifts some guys around, has a word with his center. Oklahoma brings some delayed pressure, and he throws complete. First down to Morris. Touchdown! He reads coverage so well. Eric Morris from 15 yards out. Everybody getting in the act. That's Morris's ninth touchdown catch of the year. He goes up and he just sees it's single coverage over here, checks to something, runs off the outside guy, a little out route by the slot man, gets it to him on time where he can run it into the end zone. I thought somebody was going to come up on Morris to try to force him, and he just sliced his way to the end zone. Nobody got a hand on him until the very end. It's 27 to 7. Oh boy, Oklahoma's in some trouble. Graham Harrell's just warming up to Eric Morris. Second touchdown toss of the night for Harrell. And Texas Tech is stunning the fourth ranked team in the country. IBM presents the 25 greatest players ever. Number eight, Bo Jackson. With a unique blend of power and speed, Jackson ran through SEC defenses for a career average of nearly seven yards per carry. He was twice a bowl MVP, then took home the Heisman Trophy his senior season. IBM, getting it done. Number eight, huh, Bo Jackson. Some pretty good players coming out. I'd say. Alex Trulick get a kick. The guns are up. At Jones AT&T Stadium for sure tonight. DeMarco Murray from about the one. Got across the 25, and that's about it. Charbonnet down there on the special teams makes the stop. 24-yard kick return. So the greatest players, IBM 25 greatest players, Staubach and Bo Jackson, the last two. And it makes me think, you know, I haven't seen Herschel's name up there yet. Yeah. He might be in the top seven. He might be in the top seven. Number two and number one announced on New Year's Day on ABC. Brad Nestle, Bob Gracie, Paul McGuire, Bobby Bernstein in Lubbock, Texas, where we're watching a shocker with 9-11 to go in the half. Joey Halsley in at quarterback, throwing on the run. Yeah. Completes this one. And about a nine-yard gain to Iglesias. And he needs a couple of those, Joey does, yeah. to try to find himself because they're going to need him. Oklahoma offensively coming in was the third scoring offense in the nation, averaging 45 points. Their receivers are some of the best. Their offensive line is very good. Three running backs are good. Two of their tight ends are outstanding, so they've got the people around him. Halsley just needs to make some plays. That was his first completion. Good for a nine-yard gain. 
Out to the 35. Second down in the yard. Now they can go back to the ground. They're going to get the first down on the ground with Chris Brown. So they'll move the sticks with nine minutes remaining in the first half. The race for the chase concludes tomorrow afternoon. NASCAR Nextel Cup Series, Ford 500 at Homestead, Miami on ABC tomorrow at 3 o'clock Eastern time. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Reese, you can get home in time almost to take that in, can't you? Uh, not quite. Not quite. It's not hard quite. to get out of Lubbock and get all the way to Miami. <laughs> yeah. That's true. <laughs> all the way to Homestead. Yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, although there used to be an Air Force base down there. Could have flown right in there. That would have helped. Here's a first down run and a good one by Chris Brown. And Ray John Henley made the stop. Got a who am I for you. I'm a two-time All-American Red Raider and the first player to start an offense and defense in the Super Bowl. That's who it is right there, E.J. Hollum. Texas Tech Center, and he's at the game, and Bonnie's going to be with them coming up shortly. Great player here in the late 50s, up to 60, and they went on to play for Hank Stram's Kansas City Chiefs in a couple of Super Bowls. Second down and five. Oklahoma has got it out to their 43-yard line. They're still trying to get Texas Tech territory. Two tight ends in there, Eldridge and Finley. They haven't used the tight end yet. That's one of them, Finley, in motion. They'll keep it on the ground. That's the safe play. And he's going to be short of the first down. Let's check in with Bonnie. Well, EJ's been sitting right behind the Texas Tech bench watching this walloping. How much uh, has the defense here been able to take advantage of Bradford being out, EJ? Well, you know, uh, we have a real good game plan. and just takes Each individual takes care of their own part. And, you know, whoever comes in, they're going to just going to take over. I know you love Ruffin McNeil. How has he been able to revamp the oh. defense since taking over after that Oklahoma oh. State pounding? He has so much determination and grit and uh, he really communicates with the players real well and uh, they understand his enthusiasm and he explains everything real good and he's just a wonderful guy speaking of the defense they do a great job a loss on the play one more thing for EJ because he played against McGuire in the NFL so you know is he really as tough as he makes himself out to be come on this guy was so so tough that he you know he'd go out there and uh, run tires as he went out there all the time because he was always so so tough on the cars and everything else <laughs> and when he had punt the ball I mean they had to replace footballs all the time because he'd kick it so hard that he'd bust them sometimes all right, so I guess we actually have to believe McGuire now, and he says he's tough, guys. <laughs> First time for everything, right? There is a pretty good punt. E.J., what a great player. And, Paul, I know you said he used to be just a little, little bit nuts on the special teams himself. He is nuts. I'm looking at him. Just stay right there because I'm going to jump down and whip you. I'm going to whip you. He still thinks he's tough. And, and I'll tell you something. He's one of the toughest guys that ever played the game. What was his line when he ran down on kicks and punts? First time I ever saw the guy, and I swear to honest to God, I'm on a kickoff return team, and he was on the kickoff team as L1, and, and all I heard was, yee And they scared everybody on our team. He was my center in a couple of Pro Bowls, not in Hawaii, but we used to be in L.A. and all that other stuff. He was a character. Texas Tech with the ball back and a big lead here in the second quarter, working from their own 16-yard line. The crowd is just in a frenzy. They don't care if it's offense or defense. They're cheering on every play. There's a lob pass completed to Crawford. And Crawford got about six out of it. Demarcus Granger made the stop. Texas Tech started kind of slow. When they got it going, it started with that 51-yard field goal. Look at this. And they didn't even gain anything on that drive. And then it was field goal, field goal, and three touchdowns in a row. You know what's really amazing about this football team sitting this close to it? when. When he's moving around, Harold in the backfield, all of these guys, Bob, all turn up field. They go towards the goal line, even if they're the short guys. I mean, they're always moving away from him to give him some place to throw the football. He's That's been so calm back there in the pocket. He doesn't get <laughs> frustrated, even when he has to do this, and he'll probably throw this one away, and does. So, Graham Harrell. He knows playing quarterback's not an easy job. Coach Leach uh, allows the quarterback to check from goal line to goal line and uh, says that if I call a bad play in from the sideline, get us into something good, get us into something that's going to work. And, uh, you know, that's the quarterback's main responsibility, and I think that's the toughest part about playing in the system is just making sure you're uh, moving, your, moving your unit and uh, getting into good plays. 
You know, I said before the game with ESPN Radio that he'd throw it 75 times. He's thrown it 40 times already. Yeah, and I'm, the, uh, way, I'm way under. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. This is the way they move it. This is the way they play football. This time he got some pressure in the pocket, but he found Crabtree for the first down. For as much as Harold throws, guys, there is actually a student trainer assigned to him during practice who keeps a clicker on him, basically keeps a pitch count on it because he will throw up to 220, 225 balls a day just to keep his arm sharp. We were talking to the coaches about it, and he said, you know, for him, that's just for stamina purposes because you never want him to lose that sharpness. They'll back off every once in a while. But, Greasy, think about throwing 200 times every day in practice. That's what Harold does. Got to be a young man to do that. Here he goes for number 42, and it's complete to Crawford, who broke a tackle, and another, and out across the 40-yard line, and another Texas Tech first down. I'm going to tell you something. When you take a look at this defense, look at all the guys with their hands on their hips. These guys are really tired. They're, they're running them crazy because it, you know, they've got to cover everybody, and these guys are moving deep, and even the short guys, are all again, are facing upfield. Well, they can't get off the field. Oklahoma defensively and when their offense gets out there they can't sustain a drive to give the defense a break look at the first down discrepancy man oh man here's a quick throw Crabtree's got blockers in front of him he's got another first down and now it's just chunks of yardage through the air right here it's his ninth catch Greece this one good for 15 more yards. He was averaging a little over 10 catches a game. He may end up with about 20 in this one. He might have 10 before halftime. I'd be surprised if he didn't. Look at those numbers already. Wow. Inside the Oklahoma 45. Harold Waits gets great protection. Throws the out, completes it to Britton. And he's run out of bounds just short of the first down again. Coming up on the Capital One Halftime Report, John and Craig and Doug will kind of check in. They'll talk about this one. We'll have highlights of LSU. Kansas and Missouri are currently ranked ahead of Oklahoma, and they're going to have a big battle next Saturday night. And they'll also talk about Ohio State and Michigan, who battled it out earlier today, and Ohio State won it. That's all coming up. The Capital One Halftime Reports in about four minutes and change. Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator, trying everything. Nothing's working so far for the Sooner defense. You got to give a little credit to this offensive line. As much as they throw, the few amount of sacks they get. Second down and short. And that one batted. That's about the fourth batted pass. And I think Allen Davis has hit three of those already. Number 95. And we get an update from Matt Weiner in New York. Matt. All right, Brad. Time to check our prime time pulse. Sooners in trouble in Lubbock 27-7 there on ESPN. West Virginia trying to play its way into a national title and at least the Big East Championship leading at Cincinnati 21-10. ESPN 2 has Clemson to BC for a spot in the ACC Championship. Tigers hold on to a 7-3 lead. All right, Matt, here's a pump fake on third and short screen. Pass coming back the other way. Crawford lost the ball and Oklahoma, I think, has got it. Corey Bennett, the big guy, looked like he got there. And he's got the football. Well, only two mistakes today. One on an interception return for a touchdown. And now a fumble recovery has stopped the bleeding momentarily for the Oklahoma defense. And Oklahoma really has a shot here because they have four minutes and 12 seconds to go in, in this second quarter. And all they got to do is keep the ball on the ground and keep it away from Texas Tech. Well, it was a good-looking move by Crawford. Maybe tried to make one move too many. Kind of sideswiped his own blocker. His own man, his own was, man locks it out. Yeah, uh, he, was, he was trying to push his lineman on the back and cut behind him. And that's what knocked the ball out. And Corey Bennett, the junior out of San Antonio, made the recovery. And Crawford is really slow coming to the sideline. Crawford is a true freshman that took over the halfback spot for Shannon Woods. Shannon Woods last year had 75 receptions and was the, the Big 12 total offense leader last year this year I think he's been in the doghouse is a nice way to put it uh, that's about the best way you can put it and it's pretty deep in the doghouse it seems and, and he's the only dog in it <laughs> 
Crawford, maybe it's cramping. That's what you'd kind of hope for. Uh, it's It was about 66 degrees at game time, but they've run a lot of plays, that offense of Texas Tech. And now Oklahoma's got it at the 40-yard line. Two timeouts remaining, 4-12 left in the half. Halsley's going to hand it off to DeMarco Murray. Murray broke through the first wave, and he got about nine yards. So Murray's doing his job. He had a great kick return. He's had some good runs. But now they're trailing by 20 points with four minutes left in the quarter. You know, it's really surprising to me is DeMarco Murray has not been in the ball game that much. I mean, uh, the first two series of downs, he was not in the ball game. But every time he touches the ball, it's seven, eight yards. 63 total yards is all that Oklahoma has mustered so far. Murray stays in there. Gets the call behind Eldridge, and he's got the first down. So that'll stop the clock momentarily to move the sticks, and at the 49-yard line, another Oklahoma first down. So Paul said they got plenty of time to work with. The Big 12 bowl-eligible teams, obviously Kansas with a perfect record. They've never been 11-0 before. Missouri won today. They're 10-1. Those two teams clash in Kansas City next Saturday night on ABC. Oklahoma with Texas right on their heels, and Oklahoma in a heap of trouble. Out here in West Texas in Lubbock. Wide receivers have not been a factor at all tonight. Halsley play action. Throws to his fullback out of the backfield, and he's got a first down, and he's taking some Red Raiders with him, and that's Dane Zaslaw. Big guy who we saw score a touchdown on a pass reception earlier this year. It's only the... That's only that's only the third reception for Zaslaw right here. Third reception on the year for the big fullback. He doesn't get to play a lot. Usually he's a blocker when he's in there. He's got him a first down, and now Oklahoma driving into Texas Tech territory at the 34-yard line. Plenty of time left in this quarter as Halsley throws complete. And Bob, that... That pass he threw to Iglesias, and there's another one right there. A little while ago, I said it seemed like now he's got a little bit of a rhythm at least. The more uh, the more a quarterback gets in the game, this kid hasn't played. He only threw nine balls before getting into action tonight, so he hasn't played in a game a lot. The more you get in, the more comfortable you feel. Played at Golden West Community College a couple of seasons ago. Last year, threw two passes all year. As Bob said, was not expected to play tonight, obviously. Sam Crawford out with what we feel is a concussion. But we're not sure. DeMarco Murray now just taking guys with him. Down inside the 22-yard line, another Oklahoma first down. And again, one of the big plays of the game on a fumble earlier. Sam Bradford trying to make a tackle on Marlon Williams, who had recovered the fumble. And Williams kind of gave him a stiff arm and a chops. And then he got piled on. And when he got up, when he got to the sideline, you could see it looked like the house had the lights on, but nobody was home. Yeah. And, then, you know, you teach these quarterbacks how to get rid of the ball, how to throw it here, how to recover each, how to do this. You ought to teach them when things are coming your way, when there's an interception, how to tackle or get out of the way. Let the guy go. We'd rather have you for the game of the season than, than lose you. Halsley going to the end zone too deep, intended for Iglesias, and he threw that one out of the back of the end zone. Well, we got a lot more football coming up on ESPN on Monday night. Monday night football continues. And will be Vince Young leading the Tennessee Titans into battle against Jay Cutler and the Denver Broncos. Monday night football on ESPN, 8.30 Eastern time. Coverage starts at 7, though, with Monday night countdown. Vince, one of our top 25 players yep. of all time in yep. college football. And Oklahoma's going to take a timeout. They're down to one. That's Josh Heupel, former star quarterback, All-American with Oklahoma in his day, and he'll have some things to say to Joey Halsley over there on the sideline. Let's take a look at our timeline presented by Sports Authority. There's some coaches that are on the hot seat in this conference. It's been the year of the receiver, including a bunch of guys we got on the field for Texas Tech. Colorado, a notable upset. Obviously, the only team that beat Oklahoma on a last second field goal and really the story of the Big 12 is the resurgence of the North Division Missouri and Kansas between them they have 21 wins and usually when you're talking about Kansas and Missouri you're talking about basketball not football yeah, yeah, so coach truth. Pinkle and uh, and coach Mangino have just done marvelous jobs with those two programs in the North and they'll battle it out next Saturday night on ABC and then the winner of that one will go on to the Big 12 championship 
we thought against Oklahoma, but uh, there's a little bit of a fly hey. in the soup about all yeah. that right now. Yeah, you know, uh, you know who's coming alive here is uh, Texas. Yep. If uh, Oklahoma loses here and then goes uh, against Oklahoma State, you never know. Murray takes it down to the 16-yard line. Marlon Williams made the stop, pickup of six for DeMarco Murray, who's having sensational season leads the team in rushing with 670 yards but they've got kind of a three-headed thing back there Chris Brown Alan Patrick and DeMarco Murray share a lot of the load Murray is the guy right now that is starting to emerge as the star number seven well he was coming into this game he's averaging over six yards a carry and he's the guy that should have been in that backfield the entire game third down and four They'll give it to him again. Can he get to the first down? Yes, he can. And he's got it first and goal as he puts his head down into Darcel McBath at about the five-yard line. You know, the interesting thing about him when you watch him run, right now Oklahoma with a new quarterback who can't throw the ball very well downfield. He's all, all of his passes have been short except for the one he threw a little while ago that went out of the end zone. But DeMarco Murray is, is the guy that the Tech knows is going to get the ball, but yet he still picks up seven and eight yards every time he touches it. You know what Oklahoma would like to do right now is get a touchdown, but take about a minute and 35 seconds to do it. Exactly. Use the time on the clock so the Red Raiders' offense can't get any more. First and goal at the Texas Tech 5. Murray straight up the left side and got down to about the one. And a big pile of black jerseys waiting for him. They're still dragging on him. That's a good thing, Ness. That's exactly what you asked for. <laughs> All right, let's run the clock off. You're going to give it inside of a minute when you run the next play. And we're down. Very close to the one-minute mark. Remaining second quarter. Oklahoma scored first on a Lindy Holmes interception return of 63 yards. They haven't scored since then. 27 unanswered Texas Tech points to have... A 20-point cushion here in the final 50 seconds. Tenth play of the Oklahoma drive. Murray, the tailback, the tight end in motion. Second and goal. Murray, second man through, and he's dropped for a loss. Victor Hunter made first contact, the middle linebacker. Great penetration here, guys. You just take a look, and you're going to see Victor Hunter. He really just gets through, but nobody blocked him. They got more guys in the middle of the field than they had blockers to block, and that left Victor Hunter wide open. Watch him. He's not going to really be blocked. He just skips right around everybody, and he gets into the backfield, knowing that DeMarco Murray was going to carry the ball. And that was the first negative carry for DeMarco Murray on that drive. Everybody in the ballpark knew that Oklahoma was going to run it. It would have been a perfect time for a little play-action pass. Now it's probably too late. They take the time out, Oklahoma, their final one. They've got third and goal, 27 seconds remaining. If they don't get it here, they've obviously got time to either bring out the field goal unit or go for it with 27 seconds remaining. If I'm going to give the ball to DeMarco Murray, I'm going to let him get on the edge. I'm, when I mean the edge, outside the tackle. Not a big, big wide sweep, but let him get a little bit of running room to the outside because he's powerful enough to get himself into the end zone. You see Ruffin McNeil, the defensive coordinator, trying to get his Red Raiders to come up with a goal line stand. And now Murray will flank Halsley in the shotgun as it appears that Oklahoma might put it in the air on third and goal. Halsley to the end zone, tips, incomplete, intended, Iglesias got a hand on it, Chris Parker was there covering, and Oklahoma's going to go for three. This is a huge win for the Red Raider defense. Iglesias runs to the post, the ball's a little bit high, that was catchable. Its ball was a little bit late, too, because he was open and waiting for the ball, and by the time it got there, then the... Uh, Defensive back, Parker, had closed. Garrett Hartley, 7 out of 9 on the year. Hayes McEachern will hold it. 20-yard field goal attempts he is up and good. So Oklahoma got something out of it. They certainly wanted 7. They're going to have to settle for 3. And it's 27 to 10 with 19 seconds remaining. This week in college football, 25 years ago, 
You look back, it was undefeated SMU, used a throwback lateral on a kickoff with 17 seconds left. They stayed undefeated, edging Texas Tech in the miracle on 4th Avenue in Lubbock. That lateral to Bobby Leach, he took it 91 yards as time expired. The Mustangs went on to finish 11-0-1. They finished number two in the polls. And can you believe that that was 25 years ago? National Football Foundation gives us those great looks back yep. and reminds us of some of the great plays, and we try to put them together for you, yep. put things in perspective, and make you feel old. <laughs> <laughs> Their dinner is coming up uh, this uh, December. Uh, I think it's December the 3rd in New York. I think it's the 4th. They're going to honor the uh, National Football Foundation uh, Hall of Fame inductees. Joe Paterno is going in. Right. And uh, Joe was going to go in last year before the yeah. knee injury on the sideline uh, against Wisconsin. Yeah. It's the Waldorf. And uh, if you've never been there, it's something you've got to do before you die. Uh, because uh, you've got like 3,000 men in tuxedos. <laughs> yeah, that's you what I really want to yeah, see. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. I'm glad I'm doing basketball. They, they've just they've just started allowing some ladies to come, okay, which, that's, which that's makes good. it nice. Yeah. I'll give everybody my best. I'm sure I'll be somewhere doing hoops <laughs> that night. Partly to kick. Edward Britton and Detron Lewis are right on the other end. And both of them are there. It's Britton at the goal line. Britton flags down. Probably going to be an illegal block on the return with just 14 seconds left. You would think, you would think that Texas Tech would take a no. knee and head to the locker no, room. No, no, no. All right, all right. Let me ask you a Holding question. Number 10 on the return team. That's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Does Graham Harrell know how to take a knee? No. Don't you think? <laughs> don't you think that they could get the ball to uh, Crabtree out on the flank and, and let him run? Well, for a long ways for a touchdown. That guy thinks that way. I know yeah. that. Yeah. Hey, Coach Leach, you see his uh, right arm, you might be able to, uh, with a wrapping around it, broke his arm recently in a bicycle accident. Asked him yesterday if he's got a new bike. Said, no, we had to fix it up a little bit, though. He had ice on his arm all day when we were talking to him yesterday. Yeah. And they are not going to take a knee. They're going to throw it out to Eric Morris. You might as well see if you can throw 50 passes before the half's over. That's going to end the half. 47 pass attempts by that young man in the first half. And his numbers look like this, 30 of 47, 286 and two, and he ran for a score. And he's heading to that locker room where all the student body is as we get out of body. All right, Coach Stoops, what is uh, Sam Bradford's end? Uh, they're checking him. He's uh, got a somewhat of a, concuss a con concussion. It's just how bad, we don't know. They're checking him out right now. What's the likelihood we'll see him back in the second half? Well, I'm sure it's not very likely. Okay, defensively, what needs to change in order for you to contain Tech's offense in the second half? Well, we got to come up with some third down stops. We've had a lot of third downs. We, uh, we, we, didn't, we haven't converted and been able to get off the field and fourth downs. And the offense got to stay on the field a little bit as well. Bob, thank you. Well, a team with the number four club in the country. Bob Stoops' team is in a heap of trouble at halftime. 27 to 10 as we head to New York. John Craig and Doug, fellas. All right, guys, thanks a lot. We talked about it. Dominoes had the fall at the top for things to happen for teams to move back up. Oregon, number two, already lost. Now possibly looking at Oklahoma. So the Ohio State Buckeyes, who were number